Never mind, there it goes. Red start has on you, anti meta. The real question is why the fuck WoW started with run start red fireball. Chumley's got a slow jump, but even she can hold up forward on reaction to that shit. Is this quiet? I don't know how quiet it is. Looks like it's audible. Rob plays um, several characters. I don't know. Don't look at me. Finally got tired of only being bad. Oh, that actually hit. He was caught off guard. No FADC. I think he just got it with the fireball hitting. Oh, big damage. That is Evil Ryu's one big niche over every other Shoto. This is FADC combos kill you. And FADC mid combo adds like 200 damage for Evil Ryu, which is just a shit ton. It can turn something very inoffensive like low strong fireball or low forward fireball into a huge fucking combo. He didn't even get like as strong as it gets. You can do like low forward fireball, dash in, stay in fierce, medium stomp, and then go from there. The other thing Evil Ryu does that no other Shadow does is really high damage. I guess Oni does pretty high damage. There's good Chun-Li spacing right here. He's trying to look busy without doing anything. It's an art. Oh. Traded though. Loki, I like the um, Chun-Li third strike crutch medium kick animation a lot more than the one in this game. The one they used in Street Fighter V. Like, I hate third strike Chun-Li, don't get me wrong. But I've always liked that kind of trip. That looked like jump by Roundhouse. Chun-Li has good air buttons. Maybe the best. Did you get it? That's counter hit. He had all kinds of time. That far stance strong is like plus five or something. And that's like a two frame super. Or a one frame super. And he got a counter hit, so it was like plus eight. He had like an hour to confirm that. Can't believe I even asked. Suddenly Super is kind of nuts. It will never be that big a deal even when fully unlocked because it's still a Super. But it is absolutely insane. Kind of hit combo, most strong left forward. I think it's two frames, but it is kind of hit only. It's probably easier to go from Oni to Akuma, yeah. I agree with that. The meter build. EXTP might have killed. But it's okay. Suddenly is not a comeback character. It's okay to leave someone in a spec in this game because you can just kill them from a spec so easily. Unlike 5. Oh, he missed the stain fierce. That was like a free link there. He had like a lot of time to do that, to be honest. Nice DP. Holy shit. He traded with the Hazanchi too. Hadoken. Huh. He landed on the fireball there, and the button suddenly did whiff. Also, nice DP. Chun-Li's jump is very slow, so she struggles to use jumps to punish fireballs. So she has to use her other shit to punish fireballs like that and Ultra. I don't remember if her super goes through fireballs. I think it doesn't, but it might. Nice. I heard that. Ken is cool with a K. Nice whiff punish. A whiff focus is very, very unsafe. You're locked in the animation for like a full second. Very easy to punish.
The difference between Evil Rio and Rio are actually kind of subtle, apart from the special moves that are added. But um, one thing that's very noticeable very immediately when you play one and then the other is Evil Rio's backdash goes twice as far, which seems like it'd be really good. And in general, it is good. In general, Evil Rio's backdash is better than Rio's. But one thing is the duration is much longer, which means you can backdash the same things and get like your punishes. What you can punish is less. Like Ryu can backdash some stuff and he'll still be kind of close and he'll recover faster and then he can still punish that stuff if it's like something committal. If he like backdashes a heavy normal or a grab or something like that, like a man grab. But if Evil Ryu backdashes, he's out of there. It's like, yeah, he's safer, but the chances of him getting punished are almost nil. You release back, that's just like twice as far and twice as long duration. That's a big dick cam combo. He did light DP. Light DP has more OP, but it's not really worth it for the damage. They need to have more characters that are like offshoot characters. Evil Ryu is a good start, but I want like, um... I want like slightly drunk Balrog. You know what I mean? I want Dalsim who just ate some really, really, really hot curry. He's basically like constantly got a fire effect on his mouth. I want T-Hawk, but he has a gun. Teleport away is almost impossible for T-Hawk to catch. Even if you teleport through T-Hawk, T-Hawk has an insanely hard time catching it. More of a meme set than a reset. Oh, walked into the very tip. Just don't get, just don't get 720, please. Okay. I hate to think that could have been empty jump 720, but it might have been. That should have been light DP, maybe. Would have done more damage and enabled the juggle. The Warrior does really well in any matchup where he gets guaranteed punches because his combos do fucking lots of damage. That's an ultra combo. He used to have to use meterless. You used to have to use EX DP to combo after EX Spire, but now you can do it with a medium DP. The damage is pretty nice actually, for one bar. That's a one frame link. That was like very optimal there from that connect. Light stomp into medium, close medium punch is one frame. Requires a frame perfect dash, which can be buffered, and a stand strong, which cannot. Because all that white HP, it was a weapon. But I wanted to hit that white HP. He got altered for his troubles. I feel like every character needs a way of landing their ultra. I think that's one way this game... I don't like the way this game works. A lot of characters rely on the opponent setting themselves up for the ultra. It's very hard to land Vega's ultras unless the opponent like deliberately does something that like is weak to the ultras. You need both. You need like the ultra that counters something, but also like there's a setup for it. I feel like every ultra needs a setup, but it's okay if it's like a shitty setup. It's okay if it's like um, Elena, stand medium, kick crutch, fear, struggle, ultra one. It's okay if it's something like that. But I just feel like every ultra needs some way that you can like confirm into it as a combo. I feel like Vega's kind of bad on that front, and he's not even the worst one. If they're grab ultras, sure, whatever. I don't care if El Fuerte doesn't have a way of confirming his ultras. No, it's not even ultra double. Vega can't do. Vega can't really confirm either of his ultras, and there are a lot of characters who can't. And Bison, Honda, maybe. The characters are already balanced around it, so they need to do a lot of rebalancing. Some characters are designed around being able to land their ultra like nothing, and some are designed around not being able to land it very well at all. I 
I feel like almost always the ultra you can confirm is the better ultra. For like every single character, if they have one confirmable one and one unconfirmable one, that's a one frame link. Got flash kick FADC Ultra 2. Decapri FADC Ultra 1 from Sting. Decapri target combo into Ultra 2. These are what I'm talking about. It's nice to have at least one combo like those where it like sets up your combo. Sets up your Ultra. No, after SF5 they're all charge. Sagat was not charged anyway. Now Vega isn't either. But Sagat has never been charged. Yeah, 3 are. Charging and being evil are just, you know, a thing. <laughs> Antier jab has been in a lot of games, but it's never been... I don't know. Who are characters who anti-air with lights in this game? Because there are some. Guy, with his same light kick, came to mind immediately for me. That's like his main anti-air. That and hard kick. Ooh, that was really bad. You can beat most dive kicks with fucking anything, as long as you time it right. Dive kicks are more about the unique timing than they are for like having some kind of specific anti-air. You can generally anti-air them with anything. The reason people use the weird stuff is because the weird stuff can be done less committally. All the shadows in this game can technically anti air with stand light kick, but you wouldn't, but you can. That was a really strange... He should not have done that that soon. Down towards hard kick is not too bad of a punish there. Media build. St. Fierce does more damage, but you need to burn a bar. Down towards hard kick is the highest damage you can get without burning a bar. That's not, like, stupid. Remember Zeus? He was real good. Don't like that. Hard for Evil Ryu to punish. She has to do reversal... I think reversal ultra? Or reversal Tatsu? Oh well. Ah! He cancelled to the EX stomp, which is an overhead. But big air, I hit midair. And so, what was going to be a cool overhead reset became a very unsafe whiff. Nice. You should jump hard kick as one of Vegas' best in tears. Sadly. That's a punish. It's not super risky, you take the damage of the fireball. Nice space slide. You take the damage of the fireball's white life, which is good if you want some ultra meter. And you're probably gonna get it back. Nice reaction. Not quite there in time. Vega needs both a bar and prediction, and also charge, in order to punish uh, fireballs. However, EX roll is safe, and EX uh, Claw Dive is not that unsafe. So he's not taking like a huge risk or anything. Nice charging. But still, it's just kind of notable. Like how ridiculous it is to punish fireballs as Vega without jumping. Like a lot of characters just have like some one bar thing they can do on reaction to a fireball if they're at the right spacing. But Vega can't move himself to the right spacing. And all of his stuff won't actually punish fireballs generally. You have to do it kind of predictively. EX roll, you need to be EX rolling like as they fireball and not on reaction to it. Ooh. What the fuck? He did he did too much meter build. And then he like threw away uh, probably what was almost a kill combo. Maybe he did like Ninja Jump Roundhouse stand for your medium stomp. Low strong Tatsu DP DP. Oh my god. Help. EX is almost never worth it there. Every now and then you see bigger players use the EX. Nice. 
But the EX adds 20 damage. It's like garbage. EX only does 20 more than hard for a bar. I understand why Vegas do it. It's because the EX claw dive works there, but the or the EX off flying Barcelona works there. But um the regular flying Barcelona doesn't. And in other combos the EX flip kick adds a lot more damage than the hard kick flip kick. Like ATRs and combos after um uh lights flip kick. So it's easy to think that in that context as well. But it only does more damage in those other contexts because of the unusual damage distribution of the flip kicks, Scarlet Terror. And in that context, there's no damage differential from the, or rather the the hit, the hits. There's no hit differential, so the total damage between the two is mitigated a lot. So it's like 280 damage for the hard one and fucking 300 damage for the EX one or something like that. It's like a mistake every time I see it, honestly. Unless like someone's really just trying to get the most damage they possibly can. A lot of Vega players have really unoptimized combos because Vega's combo options have changed a lot. And the hyper-optimized ones are quite difficult to do. Or they're not hard to do. Well, they are hard to do. But they're hard to spot. It's like hard to recognize in the moment. It's like, oh, I want to do my max damage 2-bar combo. And then do like, I wonder, I wonder if I'm in the right place to do this. I wonder if I can get a jump in or I wonder if I can get a close fierce with back charge. Because you won't always, in a punish scenario, have close fierce with back charge. But the, his like most damage for two bars, which is actually worth it, is um like close fierce into ex roll, which you need back charge. So you know you need to be point blank for the close normal, and you need to be um, holding back already. Close fierce into ex roll, and ex roll is plus four, and then you link uh, low strong from that, and then you can combo ex playing Barcelona from there. And that does a lot of damage for two bars. It's worth it. But it's a one frame link, and it requires you to start with a close fierce, and it also requires you to have prior charge. And it's a two bar combo, so like, you know, maybe you're just looking for your one bar combos, and you want to do like two one bar combos instead. It's like a good combo that's worth going for, but that's just an example of the kind of combos Vega has that a lot of people never ever do. It's like worth, it's worth going for, and it's worth hitting. If he started by the jump in, Tiok would actually be dead. He had a guaranteed kill, I'm pretty sure, with a uh, chip DP. Honestly, backdash, it wasn't even probably a read. It's just backdash is always a good option when Tiok's next to you. It's like he was he was simultaneously reading the EXDP, the fucking command grab, and like nothing. <laughs> the 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 bait. Because like even if Evil Ryu just backdashes T Hawk has an insanely hard time punishing it. That's unsafe, but he missed the punish. It's shitty. This is a shitty matchup. It's not even that shitty. There's nothing particular about Evil Ryu that really bodies T Hawk besides maybe the teleport. Which is very difficult for T Hawk to chase. It's basically fully up to Evil Ryu how far apart he is from T-Hawk. T-Hawk has very little say in the matter. Nice. He gets a fully charged Ultra 1 here. Did not even charge it. It's just like... It's just Evil Ryu being good and T-Hawk being shitty. It's not even a particular thing about Evil Ryu or a particular thing about T-Hawk. Although, I guess it is the teleport and the backdash, which are both pretty good. Both unique tools. Why the crouch jab? The crouch jab added a one frame link and lowered his damage. That was so, like, low-key shitty. That was such, like, a drop. It was a subtle little drop. A subtle error in the combo. Made the combo hard harder and weaker. Good old Ibuki. Teleport. Maybe he can reaction neck breaker those, but he didn't see it. I don't like that reset, but he made it look kind of cool. Uh, mmm, a bad punish. Buki combos are pretty tight in this game. 
I didn't think he could kill from that, but he did. I remember. Those were the days. It was good. Yeah! Crab? No. He's a little too safe. And her set play is a little too good. They sought to destroy characters like this in Street Fighter V, but they ended up making a different kind of set play. But at least they removed this kind of set play, so that's something. Well, there's still this kind of set play, but it's not as overt as Ibuki. The nice thing about parries in Street Fighter 3 is that set play is not really not really a thing. Or there's set play, but it's it's a different kind of set play. It's variational set play. It's set play, but instead of doing like set play is kind of impossible to remove. But um it's set play, but instead of doing one thing, it's doing three things. One of three things. Like the neutral is still full of life and third strike. But when you get like a knockdown, it's like, well, am I going to go for my high only parry, stay medium punch? Am I going to go for my low only parry, low forward, low short? Am I going to go for my overhead? Am I going to go over, go for my low? Low confirm. It has like block strings that play really badly. Block strings are really dominant for certain characters. You can math out your block strings really easily. And just create sequences that are very hard to counter. That'll catch most stuff. I don't even remember what EX Rider does compared to regular Rider in this game. Because it doesn't move. EX Rider doesn't even exist in Street Fighter 3. I'm okay with Crush Counters coding a crumple. I just don't like the Crush Counters to let you get your borderline max damage combos off of a poke. That shouldn't be. Guaranteed death, I think. Like a Pulcher would have been blocked. Crush counters are like overrated. A lot of people are like, oh my god, look how much damage they do. But they're not that much stronger than regular combos. Crush counters are generally weaker than like jumping combos. They're stronger than your regular punish, but they're like not as strong as like your regular punish from a jump in. That cheap shit. Fierce is a crush counter that knocks down. You might be talking about Runhouse. Red House does less pushback. Anyway, that's fake as fuck. If Balog is actually doing that, the real problem is that he cannot do that. Red House is the one that sets up a full combo on any crush counter. Fierce doesn't even have a combo. Fierce has cancelled the super. That's like the only combo. And also cancelled the V trigger. Wow, that was some good shit. He jumped really late. This chun has got some good legs. Those legs are plus a lot on block, and they're plus even more on hit. Those are hard to do. Chun-Li has hella leg loops on tons of characters, but you are they're different for every character. And it requires uh, different versions of legs, and different sometimes different amounts of mashing. Usually you don't want any mashing, though. That was a failed plank, maybe? He went for big damage there. Trying to get a stun on T-Hawk. 
bit cheeky. He's still almost easy, yeah. That was pretty dominant. I would say Chun Li probably counterpicks T Hawk a bit. Maybe a lot. Chun Li actually is one of the most technical characters in this game. Top five technical characters. Mostly involving mostly because of those lightning like kind of combos. I'm sure everyone's seen desk videos. She's got like really weird loops depending on uh, which character she's fighting and whether they're standing or crouching and how far away they are and which versions of lightning like she uses. Some characters she only gets like fucking crouch fierce legs, crouch forward, something like that. She usually gets that on everyone. But on certain characters she can get loops. Jerky's usually much more technical than Ryu anyway. The last technical is a radically different question. Akuma's usually only technical when it comes to landing his metered stuff. He's usually pretty simple apart from that. That was good. Good bar. It's really hard to... You can get like an extra hit if you delay that a little bit. But it's really hard to do. Because delaying a mash move is very... You know, it's easy to drop the mash you've done so far. Slide punished, it low profiled the uh, stand strong. Ooh, stand forward. Oh my god. Double overhead. That's overhead into mid in Street Fighter V. This can maybe kill. He went for max, max damage. Nisha's on hard punch is uh, only one hitter scaling instead of two. Because you don't have to hit, you don't have to hit hard punch for the second hit, unlike the four jump hard punch, which matters a lot for scaling purposes. Suddenly, so snitcher jump hard punch does like 130 or 140 damage or something like that. It's like a shit ton, and it does it scales the same as any other jump normal. So it's basically 40 40 extra damage for no reason. Oh, that punishes everything. That was super nice. That red focus. Kill a Buki twice over. Red focus do 1.5 times the damage of regular focuses. So if your regular focus isn't that strong, your red focus also isn't that strong. I seem to recall Chun Li's focus attack does less damage than average, but not way less. I remember Sims does like a really embarrassing amount of damage. Sim's focus attack is like only like two thirds the damage of every other character. I feel most technical in this game when it comes to landing his ultras. You can do a lot of stuff with his ultras. Like shit, you can like get focused and then cancel whatever you got focused into your ultra. Third strike, he definitely has whack setups. Not even out of his, just his supers. If you think third strike Akuma is really simple, you've just never seen a third strike Akuma's really dumb stuff. Really easy example of that is the Tatsu, co Tatsu combos. If you've never seen third strike Akuma Tatsu combos, I don't blame me because no one does them. But they're really good. Kuroda is like the only player I've ever seen who actually uses them. We can find some Kuroto Okuma after this and look at it. And you can be like, wow, this is a really technical character. That's a link. He did not Ultra 2, but he almost definitely should have. This might fall out. Didn't. Regular DP. I think no version of regular DP has invincibility. 
Medium toss to the DP and Fireball Super are like very slightly technical. Emphasis on very slightly. It's his Tatsu Tatsu combos that are nuts. Like he can get first and last hit of uh, ground hard Tatsu and then do a jump instant air Tatsu and juggle three hits of that. Nice. Super jump cancel. Into ultra. Those are just a bit hard to do. It's not really hard at all, it's just precise. Those were really cool in cross Tekken. They actually did a, a they they did a really fun job with her super in cross Tekken. Her super in cross Tekken is, um, it's like the grab super, but it's a hit. It's not a grab anymore, but it's like the two frame throw ultra. But they made it into a hit. But it's still fast as fuck. I don't know how fast it actually is, but it seems like it's still two or three frames. So you can do some really strange struggles with it. I don't think it's super jump hard, Tatsu. It might be. I don't know if it's necessarily medium Tatsu either. It's not something you can get off of grounded Tatsu full connects. It often has to start with some other launcher, like an air Tatsu into a ground Tatsu into another air Tatsu. Stuff like that. There's a lot of variations of it, but I don't know them all offhand. Jump strong is a good button. They made that start a launch state in cross Tekken. The mid soccer are real neat in cross second to be honest. It's a bit downs, I guess. That's it. They did a really good job creating Alpha 3 Sakura in this game. Tiny range, walk up to you, get fat combos, do lots and lots of damage. Executionally, soccer is like, hope you like Lynx. But gameplay wise, her plan is pretty simple, which I like. She's got a clear objective walk forward, mess jab. Maybe do some light tattoos here and there. If they block, they're good. If they hit, they're even better. He couldn't charge the fireball there, I think. I don't know if he could have. I don't know if Ibuki Soldier 2 would have woken up into that. That did nothing. Ibuki Super is a bit hard to land. Fighter 5, if I like Sakura. Don't look at me, dog. Sakura ish characters in Street Fighter 5. It's probably just a Buki or Kami. Really?
Sid on the front. Kinda dirty. That was max damage. Did a lot too. I'm surprised there was time for that. Whoa! That was kind of a questionable decision. It probably would have killed if it hit. Whoa. The hitbox. That was a good confirm. He needed something like that. Those combos do surprisingly that I mentioned, unless you're going for the really optimal ones. Like Jump Fierce, Crutch Fierce, Super Jump Cancel Ultra. The ones that have like the confirmed strings that Super Jump Cancel just scale your damage a lot, and that Ultra's already kind of weak. Combos like those only barely do more damage than like, you know, your regular Ascenders, Neckbreaker and shit. Or just completing the TCs. They didn't really think in this game when it came to a lot of TCs. They didn't really think about the way that TCs and um, the scaling were interacting with each other. And as a result, most TCs in this game are kind of garbage. I think that's something that Street Fighter V did a lot better. I'm thinking about that video I was going to make. I kind of want to make it. I'm kind of in that mood to make it. I might open the text file and just work on it a little bit. The Street Fighter 4 Game Theory one. I'm in that mood. I could make that today. Whew. How long is this footage? My mood is kind of turned off of Street Fighter 4 very abruptly. Turned off it is not the right term. I've just been thinking about um, cross decking in Street Fighter 3. Yeah, so I've got a video where I. I've got a video in the works that I've basically already scripted. It's basically done. Where I talk about um, things that were wrong with Street Fighter 4. And the ways that cross decking and Street Fighter 5 both attempted to fix them. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Uh, I've hyperventilated before. It's not a pleasant feeling at all. It's very hard to correct your breathing once there's something wrong with it. It takes a very long time for correct breathing to sort back to you feeling better. So it's very easy to get the feeling that you trying to fix your breathing is doing nothing. Also when you're hyperventilating it's very easy to get the feeling that you're um... you have no idea how fast you normally breathe. I guess that feels like a plastic bag. I think it has the potential to be one of my most popular videos ever. I've already written this really big fucking text file about all the things in the approximate script, but um, I haven't uh, I haven't finalized it yet or anything. I just think it'd be a really fun little video. 
think people would like it. I think I'm more qualified than most people to make a video like that. And I think a lot of people would like, you know, be really entertained by the idea. Do you have your sources? I would just, you know, you would just have game footage. What do you mean my sources? I am the source. Tried to chase it down with the X Knight Wrecker and it didn't work. It's my own observations. In text citations. Hmm. Ah, uh, Vegas sucks. I hate when I see that. They like mostly fixed that in Super, and then they haven't changed it since then. I really feel like you shouldn't be able to like. You should. That should never ever fall out. If only no text citations only got you minus twenty percent. Most of my professors say just throw your fucking paper right in the trash. This is too hard to come back for Ibuki to make, I think, unless she gets like a Miracle Connect. Yeah. Ibuki didn't play the end game, right? We're gonna find some third strike Kuroda. Where's like the one with him versus MOB? 